If there's anything I've learned so far in 2020, it is A, I should have paid way more attention in home ec class, 2, I had literally no idea how to wash my hands properly, and Roman numeral 3, cockroaches are way faster and bigger than I ever would have expected. Speaking from personal experience, uh, there was a cockroach in my apartment, and I trapped it underneath a pot and taped it to the ground to make sure the cockroach couldn't, like, compact itself and then escape out of the cracks, you know, like how it gets into houses. And I literally left it there for two weeks until my friend moved to New York, at which point I said, hello, welcome to New York, oh, the greatest city in the world, would you please take my cockroach into the hallway and murder it for me? Point is, I've been doing just about the entire range of home ec activities. I have been baking banana bread, I've been spending a weird amount of time deciding between different home goods on Target and calculating per ounce which one is cheapest, and today I'm gonna try to get better at sewing. To give you guys a little background about my sewing experience, basically growing up, my mom would always sew like Halloween costumes or like little matching dresses for me and my sister, but I would never really developed an interest in fashion until my sister forced me to watch every single episode of Project Runway for like 10 years. At first I would just sit in the corner and play Animal Crossing on my DS, much like I do now, honestly not much has changed, but over time, mostly thanks to Tim Gunn's encouraging phrases and Michael Kors' Shakespearean level oddly specific insults. She just looked like rigatoni Mad Max. Big bowl of sawdust. She is pooping fabric. I think her hair is gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? Well that's about all that I think looks gorgeous. I was like, hey, this fashion thing seems kind of cool. So by the time middle school came around, I decided I wanted to try sewing, but I was also very, very stubborn as a child, as I am now, um, which is probably why I've never had a normal job where I have to work with anybody else or compromise in any way. Anyways, as a 12 year old with about a total of five brain cells on me, four of which were taken up by Tumblr and the other one of which was taken up by crushing on boys who I would later realize were kind of mean. I decided that I didn't want to start with patterns because that would be like somebody else telling me what to do. And I didn't really like the designs that they offered. So I tried to make my patterns from scratch and it's actually really fucking hard. <laughs> so I like tried to make myself a dress, but like I completely miscalculated everything. It didn't really fit right. Um, I had like no darts for like my tiny little uh, 12 year old boobs. Needless to say, none of those clothes turned out very well. It kind of shattered my incredibly fragile middle schooler ego and I never made clothes from scratch again. That is until today. Dun dun. Duh. Sorry this intro is like super long, it's kind of just like a bad stand-up set. Um, as you can tell, I don't talk to a lot of people. Anyways, I went online and I picked up some vintage patterns from Etsy. They all have this like lovely gathering detail, ruching detail, cool necklines, all of the stuff that I like. So yeah, I'm gonna sew one of them, which I guess you already knew from clicking on the title of this video. So there's three minutes of your life you're never gonna get back. Pick your season occupation It's time to send in your application Get to know your short-term friends you only talk to till summer ends The best way to spend your day in it When you're only making ten bucks every sixty minutes Third floor Let's clock out, you and me Wander over West County the next day because I thought going to mood would take like 15 minutes. It turns out I was in there for two and a half hours. Going to the fabric store is kind of like going to Home Depot where you just enter like a fugue state, you lose track of time, you forget who you are, you just start wandering the aisles, eyes glazed over, unsure of your purpose in life. 
The main difference is that instead of being intimidated by buff 45 year old dads, I was just intimidated by 20 something hip fashion students. Anyways, several hours and a mild identity crisis later, I did end up finding some fabric that I liked. To explain a bit of my thought process, I went into mood with these two patterns and I figured I would make whichever one I found the best fabric for. I thought it would be a lot easier to find fabric for this little sundress, but it turns out they really didn't have a whole lot of like retro polka dots, gingham, and nice like pastel colors, which is what I was looking for for this dress. So I ended up going for this admittedly more complicated pattern. Now this pattern originally calls for two different types of fabric. It has a silky solid color for the skirt and then this kind of like ditzy floral for the top. But for the life of me, I could not find a good vintage floral there. I hunted. I really tried. I looked at every single different type of floral fabric they had, but they were mostly like large 80s and 70s inspired prints. They were really large scale, brighter colors that I thought would look really distracting with all of the ruffle detail on this design. So I ended up just getting one solid fabric to make the entire dress. This fabric drapes and moves so beautifully, which is what I wanted because of like the long flowy skirt on this dress. I really wanted something that would like move with my body, hang off my ass, really nicely. I also picked up this silk fabric that I think is what Marc Jacobs uses for like lining their bags or something. It is this beautiful pink color and then it has super subtle Marc Jacobs logos on it. I was originally thinking maybe I could do like pink on top and green on the bottom, but then I held it up on my body and it looked kind of busy and like an ice cream cone for some reason. So I think I'm gonna save this for another project. I also got some eyelets for the front and sleeve details on the dress, some trim to make little bows, a matching zipper, and some thread. Ladies and gentlemen, Maxwell Landry and the ceramics. Oh baby, first you make your dough and you roll out the crust. While we're working on the lattice, I'm my brother, yeah. Uh, uh, number two, you mix the berries and the sugar into a bar. Don't you call me, baby, I got sugar for you. sewing my actual, why am I having so much trouble speaking? Before I started getting sewing, before I start sewing my actual dress, I thought I would do a little fabric test on this kind of fallopian tubes shaped fap, 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 scrap of fabric. Naturally, I decided to start my first sewing project in like 10 years with one of the most flimsy, pain in the ass fabrics to sew, which as you can see here, just does not take particularly well to being stabbed repeatedly. Although I suppose neither would I, so I can't really blame it. Luckily, thanks to my guardian angels, the DIY moms of YouTube, I was able to find this tissue paper technique to help my seams lay flat. Basically, you sandwich your fabric between two layers of tissue paper to help stabilize it and prevent it from getting like sucked into the abyss of the bottom of the sewing machine. I was a little skeptical at first, so I wanted to test it out, but honestly, this technique kind of slaps. The fabric is so much smoother and way easier to sew in a straight line. So with my proof of concept, it was time to get started on the real deal. Hey Google, play Betty by Taylor Swift. I laid out all my pattern pieces on the floor and started pinning together what felt like the world's most intricate pinata. Not because it was full of fun treats on the inside, but because it took several hours and an absurd amount of tissue paper to assemble. Oh, what's that? Did you like that incredibly niche, handmade pinata themed joke? Would you like to learn more about the pinatas that I made as a child for my birthday parties? Oh, I'm sure you would. Here's a slideshow that I made. Exhibit A. I'm honestly not really sure what the fuck this one is supposed to be. I would call this one abstract art. If you look closely, you can see the influences from um, Pollock, a little Mondrain. Uh, if you look, if you look very closely, there's even a little Banksy-esque element to it. You know, what is art? I think is what this piece asks. This one is supposed to be a pear. I don't know why I thought pears were red at the top, but um, I was 10 years old, so I had essentially the equivalent brain power of an intelligent goldfish. This one was supposed to be cherries. I think I did a decent job on that, although I don't know why I had so much physical aggression to take out on fruit as a child. And this one, the face was on the other side, uh, but it was supposed to be Voldemort. 
and I thought that was quite clever as a 12 year old. <laughs> Please subscribe for more pinata reviews. Next week, we'll be looking at this frozen theme pinata and asking, why the hell is Elsa so thick? Anyhow, here I am sewing my first seam, which was surprisingly way more straightforward than altered and thrifted clothing, since I didn't have to do this like Japanese game show obstacle course around buttons and seams and random zippers. Here is my first seam. It honestly does not look like a complete fucking disaster yet, so that's a good sign. And then I tore off the tissue paper from the finish. This reminds me of if you've ever taken a really violent shit and then had to wipe it off with one ply public school toilet paper. There's so many little bits of paper stuck in so many crevices. Alrighty, so here we have my soon to be boob panel of the dress. So the front of the dress is supposed to have this ribbon running through it that you can tie and tighten kind of like a shoelace, um, like a boob shoelace is the technical term. So in order to install that, I needed to use some eyelets, which are essentially little like metal hole stretchers. Um, to install our little fabric butt plugs, you just make a little hole, put one through the back, put one through the front, use some protection in the form of this metal tool that comes with the package, hammer it out a little bit, and pray your next door neighbor doesn't complain about the noise. Okay, this is how it came out with the eyelets. And I'm not gonna lie, she's looking kind of tortured. She looks like she's been on a three hour date with a boy who just mansplained Pulp Fiction to her. It's not great. It turns out these eyelets are kind of moody little bitches. If you hammer them just a little too hard, they get all squashed like this one. If you don't cut the hole big enough, it gets all wrinkly like this one. But I didn't buy enough eyelets in order to remake this piece of the dress. So I'm kind of just gonna run with it and hope that once I put the ribbon through it and it's all gathered up, uh, people will be distracted from the fact that this looks uh, kind of fucked up. when they're sewing. Like, there's a special type of stress sweat that's like extra sticky and it gets all over my hands and my fucking armpits when I sew because I'm really nervous. Ooh. Okay, update. This flap of fabric is what I have labored for three hours to create. This is almost the entire front of the dress minus the sleeves and the bow. So uh, now I'm just going to attach it to the back of the dress and then uh, that's all I had to say. All I've eaten today is two cups of matcha and two cookies, so I'm simultaneously really fatigued and hyper at the same time. The best of both worlds. Yeah. As the sun set and my matcha high faded, things started to take a little bit of a turn for the worse. Sewing while hungry is kind of like driving while drunk or hooking up with your ex, and that is just a bad fucking idea. Nothing disastrous happened until it came time to install the invisible zipper, at which point I realized I don't own a zipper foot, nor do I have any experience whatsoever installing zippers. At first, I tried sewing it with a regular foot, but I kept swerving over the plastic part of the zipper, which you're not supposed to do at all, and I managed to break not one, not two, but three needles. Fucking hell. Mm. Unsurprisingly, after I finished sewing, the zipper didn't even work, so I had to rip it out. I have been trying to seam rip this invisible zipper without a fucking seam ripper. So I've been trying to do it with a needle and sewing scissors. Do you know how hard that is on silk? I feel like I'm trying to perform heart surgery with a fucking spatula. Ah! One invisible zipper and a slight mental breakdown later, my dress was looking like a bad, sexy Statue of Liberty Halloween costume, and my floor was looking like a small raccoon had broken into my apartment, and or I had just come out of a depressive episode. Am I right, ladies? Nevertheless, eventually I pulled myself together, mostly thanks to years of exclusively being productive after 2am, and sewed on some sleeves, and put together the final finishing touches. That was a little redundant, Ashley. The finishing touches. 
earwax in my ear it literally sounds like I'm like underwater in one ear it's really weird I can like hear myself because I have this like feedback loop mic check anybody there no nope. so yeah this is how the dress turned out but before I go I wanted to leave you guys with a couple takeaways and things that I learned from my first sewing experiment so my number one takeaway is that buying the right supplies is like half the battle when you're sewing and I fucked up on a couple fronts here like for example I could have avoided an entire meltdown at 2 a.m. if I just bought an invisible zipper foot beforehand another example is that since I was in a hurry I bought the only eyelets that they had in mood which happened to be these really big and bulky ones but it turns out they just aren't the right size for this fabric and I should have realized that after I put the first eyelet in and it looked like heavy and bulky as fuck but yeah some of these eyelets are actually already coming out of the dress just because this fabric has so much stretch to it and it's so flimsy and thin that the eyelets just like will not stay in the fabric properly uh so I definitely fucked up there I should have waited like another week and actually bought the right sized eyelets um but I was kind of in a hurry because I haven't posted on YouTube in a month the second thing I learned is that it's so important to cut out your pattern carefully. The vast majority of my sewing experience has been upcycling thrifted clothing and most of the time I actually sew like a hem or I take in the sides and then I cut the fabric so to me it has never been that important to cut fabric accurately but I learned that when you're sewing from a pattern it's so important to cut the shape exactly as it is because then you end up using the edge of your cut line as a guide for where to sew. So if you cut your pattern all wonky you're gonna end up sewing your lines wonky. The next thing I learned was to always leave leave time to get extra supplies or just buy extra supplies up front so if you fuck up you have a backup option. I was stress sweating the entire time I was sewing this dress because I knew that if I fucked up I didn't have any extra materials to fix it and um, especially when you're a beginner I think that type of stress makes you sew worse. You definitely gotta trust the process when you're sewing. This dress looked so ugly up until the point when I added the bows and everything became nice and ruffled. Don't give up halfway through if your dress is looking like fucking roadkill because mine was and now it looks like this and I think it looks pretty fucking cool. Another thing I learned is that low-key it's okay if you fuck up. I was really nervous when I was sewing some of my lines like they weren't the straightest. At the end of the day nobody looks that closely. Sorry for the voice crack. I'm 22 and still going through puberty. Nobody really looks that closely at your clothing, especially now. People can't even get within six feet of you, so they can't see that you fucked up your sewing. So yeah, it's honestly not a big deal if you're not perfect at it. I mean, that goes for most things in life. I tell myself a complete perfectionist. And my last lesson is to always, always, always trust the sewing moms of YouTube. They have got your back. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you want this to be like a series, if I should do more episodes, try to design a pattern from scratch. It was actually really satisfying to see just a sheet of fabric turn into a full-fledged dress that I made from scratch. And it's so cool to wear this and be like, I made this. That's so cool. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.